Morning everyone. Uh, I imagine that looks a bit weird, doesn't it? Me using a tripod. I've, uh, I've bought a new one. I don't know why, to be honest. If you've not been around this channel for long, you might not know, but I, uh, I despise tripods. And um, yeah, this feels a bit strange. But to be honest, this is just for comparison today. Basically, I'm out trying to test uh, how slow I can go in terms of shutter speed on my S5. Uh, my G9, which I've also brought with me, I have relied on for uh, low light, stable handheld shots because I, I hate tripods so much. So for the last three years, I've been using that and typically at sensible focal length, so anything up to sort of 70 mil full frame equivalent, I've been able to get uh, a shutter speed of about a second, maybe just under a second and get sharp results. And uh, I wanted to come out this morning and find out if my S5 is the same. I assume it is, but uh, it's better to test these things. Some tips if uh, you're trying to get fairly slow shutter speeds handheld. I stand with my legs apart like this, about 45 degrees to the target, and I keep my head somewhere between my legs. Uh, that's because if you're leaning over one of your legs, it's just not as stable being over one limb as it is being over two. Also, I don't really drink coffee before I come out because that makes me shake, and I try and wear enough clothing to make sure that I'm not shivering as well. Uh, I keep the entire weight of the camera in my left hand with my elbow tucked in, and then my right hand is just for playing with the buttons. And uh, I try and exhale when the shutter's open, which given I use a two second timer, takes a bit of practice because I need to make sure that I'm breathing out when the shutter opens, not when I press the shutter. So I need to wait two seconds for my out breath when I press the shutter. But I do find that helps typically. And ultimately, I think I end up with the sharpest shots possible handheld. So legs apart, head between my legs. That's not a second, take down the aperture. F13. <clears throat> Good news, it, uh, it turns out that through lockdown, I haven't completely lost my ability to uh, take photos at relatively slow shutter speeds. I can't give myself too much credit, to be honest. It's all to do with the, uh, the amazing stabilization of the sensor. But uh, yeah, here is a photo that I took with a tripod. Obviously, as you'd expect, it's sharp. It'd be a bit disappointing if it wasn't. Uh, and here is a photo that I took handheld with a one second exposure. And as you can see, it's completely blurry. I didn't do a particularly good job with that. Luckily, 80% of the photos that I took roughly, give or take this morning, uh, with a one second exposure, uh, a sharp. And that is about right for what I achieved with my G9 over the course of the last three years. That said, there was no wind this morning, and that, that's a huge factor when you're trying to keep yourself steady. Also, obviously, if I was to go over that, uh, that focal length, that 50 mil focal length, as I probably should have done with this photo, to be honest, because it's, it's a pretty naff photo. Although the conditions were rubbish, you can't see the mountains in the background and it was low tide, so all you can see is mud in the foreground. But had I gone longer than 50 mil, my success rate probably would have dropped quite drastically. So yeah, wind and focal length are the, uh, the variables in this, and whether you've had coffee and uh, are wearing enough clothes as well. Um, but yeah, I think it's a, a process that's well worth going through, trying to work out what kind of shutter speeds you're able to use with your equipment. Um, if, like me, you don't particularly like to get your tripod out and you only do it when it's absolutely necessary, because it's good to know what necessary is for you. And the words need and tripod being used in the same sentence is a bit of a strange one because every photographer is different. Some photographers argue that they need a tripod all the time because they much prefer using tripods. Uh, it helps their method. They feel more comfortable when they're using a tripod regardless of what the shutter speed's gonna be. Um, I would suggest that for this purpose, the purpose of this video, I'm gonna define need as getting a different or superior result with a tripod versus not using a tripod in terms of sharpness. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with wanting to use a tripod all the time. I'm not like that, uh, but I know plenty of photographers are, and uh, I get it if it helps you process. But uh, yeah, this is about when you absolutely critically need to use one in order to increase your, uh, your sharpness. Uh, anyway, that doesn't really explain why I bought a new tripod, does it? So I shall, I shall go through my reasoning for that now. But yeah, it came with this very nice, um, nice case. Too nice, to be honest. I do wonder how much of the money that I paid for this was, was spent on this. And to that end, actually, look at this. The box that it came in, right? It's got an elastic top that keeps the top of the box together with the bottom. 
That is so over-engineered. What? How much did that cost? Anyway, I paid for this tripod, as you'd probably expect, because there is no tripod company in their right mind that would give me a tripod for free, given that I very publicly, and for years, suggested that I despised them. But the reason I have spent quite a lot of money, to be honest, on this uh, this Peak Design Carbon tripod, and I can say that in confidence, knowing that there's absolutely no way Emily will watch a video about tripods. Um, the reason is threefold. So I, as has been determined this morning, need to use a tripod when I need to use a shutter speed of over a second, basically, when the light gets really low. Um, a couple of other reasons I need to use a tripod though, number one, video. So whenever I'm out filming, like this morning, the camera that you're watching me on uh, is sat on a tripod, typically and until a levitating camera is invented, that will have to continue to be the case. I mean, I know there are drones. I mean, that is a, a levitating camera, but they can't quite do the same thing. And you can't attach a microphone to them, so that brings some problems. And also this morning I was stood not far from a bike path, so you'd, you'd probably take out quite a few cyclists if you had a drone just hovering that low. Um, the other reason that I like to use a tripod, I wouldn't say like to use a tripod, need to use a tripod, is when I want to include myself in the frame to give a sense of scale or to offer something different in terms of colour, something along those lines. I quite like to do that often, and a tripod, if I'm out shooting on my own, is typically the only way to do it. Again, aside from a drone. But with a drone, you're stuck to one focal length, or certainly my drone, you're stuck to one focal length, so that's not not ideal either. Anyway, my old tripod is more than capable of uh, doing all three of those things. It's just that, despite being called a travel tripod, it, um, it's quite a lot bigger than, than this Peak Design one. So it packs down to that. That is the footprint, which is absolutely ridiculous. I can get this in my bag, inside the bag, uh, and I can also fit this on a bike frame, and I love the idea of that. Um, speaking of bikes, I've got an upcoming project soon, and uh, what do you think of these? Pretty cool, right? <clears throat> and no, uh, the, uh, the upcoming project is not a Lady Gaga music video. Um, so yeah, if you've been wondering whether or not you need a tripod or not, I would suggest going out with your equipment and uh, working out with your technique and your equipment what is possible in terms of slow shutter speeds handheld. And uh, then you can observe how often you need a shutter speed longer than what you're capable of hand holding typically. Uh, and if it's a lot, you might decide that you need a tripod. If it's never, then you might get away without one. All fairly obvious really, but uh, I thought I'd, I'd tackle that subject because you might have thought it was a bit strange that I spent a lot of money on a new tripod given my feelings about them. Um, yes, oh, before you go, um, presets. So you might remember about 18 months ago, I put some presets on my website for one million pounds. Uh, I also said that if you sign up to the newsletter, within the first email that you get, there will be a code that gives you 100% off those presets. Now I was hoping that at least 10 people would, um, would mess that up and I would end up with 10 million pounds. Unfortunately, this week we ticked over to 15,000 downloads of uh, those presets and not one person has messed up. Anyway, for a while now, I have been meaning to update those presets because to be honest, since I put them on the website, I've made lots of changes to the presets that I use. I don't really use the ones that are on my website now in their current guise. And I've updated a couple of them, I've lost three of them, and I've added 13 to the current preset pack that I use. And I've added that to my website, but now there is a charge um, on the basis that nobody made a mistake and I haven't made 10 million pounds. So I thought I should probably try and pay some bills with the presets given that they seem quite popular. Uh, now I have talked a lot in the past, in fact I've made a dedicated video moaning about people buying presets, and particularly presets that cost extortionate amounts of money. And I stand by all the reasons that I think you shouldn't buy presets, but since then lots of people have also pointed out to me that they're useful on the basis that you can almost reverse engineer how some of your favourite photographers edit. Um, and if you find that my presets have been useful, then I assume that these new ones, these ones that I've, to be honest, spent a lot more time on, Hopefully they'll be useful to you as well. And uh, I've tried to price them in the way that A, values my time that I've put into them, but B, doesn't take the mick, which I think some preset packs do. So um, yeah, hopefully you enjoy those, but I get it if you don't want to spend your money on them. And uh, yeah, that's just one of the things I've been up to in lockdown, as well as 
choosing horrific sunglasses. Anyway, I'll see you next week when we'll be another week closer to me being able to be back out in the mountains and you've been able to be back out into the mountains if that's not possible for you right now. So uh, fingers crossed, we're heading in the right direction and uh, see you soon. Thanks for watching.